I'm going to speak about the subject of what is maritime law. Maritime law governs the movement of all vessels on this planet. That's what maritime law is. And the details of it is how do you move one vessel from point A to point B to point Z without any collisions occurring. That's, that's what the federal government does. It controls maritime law and that is the safe movement of vessels. Now under maritime law, letters are vessels, therefore it comes under maritime law. Your roads are inland waterways, so that's maritime law. When a mother gives birth um, to her baby, they don't call it a live baby or a live birth, birth uh, sorry, a live born, they call it a birth, which is a maritime express, and so, so they can capture um, the, the live birth in maritime and that leads of course to fraud but essentially the the language itself also creates the governance of which conduits you're swimming in so maritime law just to recap again it governs the movement of all vessels including letters paper cars uh, rail, rail lines train lines postal line pony expresses and that's what maritime law is so if you want to know how maritime law works, go and do a course on how to be a yachtsman. And that's the same law that governs the movement of you and I. So to continue with it, all, mar all vessels have to have a flag. And this is uh, David's flag. And this is the flag that I use. And it's a language flag, which he captured, albeit uh, claimed it as salvage. Now, if your vessel uh, that is you, as well as your ship or a letter, doesn't have a flag, what it essentially means is that you're a derelict vessel and open to be under, go under salvage or lost, baptized, souls lost at sea. Some of these very colourful words. So that is part of the maritime protocols as well as etiquettes that govern the movement of vessels. This here is the United States civil flag. The old stars and stripes, the flag everybody knows, uh, is the military flag. This is the civil flag, the peacetime flag, uh, the flag that should appear everywhere that isn't a military installation. But before 1940, no U.S. flag, civil or military, flew within the 48 states except in federal settings and installations. Only state flags did. Since the 1935 Institution of Social Security and the Buck Act of 1940, by clever, clever legal maneuvers, the feds have entirely circumvented the U.S. Constitution and have overlaid federal territorial jurisdiction on the sovereign states, bringing them under the Admiralty Military Jurisdiction of Law Merchant, the Uniform Commercial Code, and the Law of Creditors and Debtors. Since then, so since 1940, the U.S. military flag appears besides or in place of the state flags in nearly all locations within the states. All of the state courts and even the municipal ones now openly display it. In the last half century, they have more openly declared the military admiralty law jurisdiction. With the addition of the gold fringe on the flag, the military flag of the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. Such has been the path that has brought us under the law of the military flag. This should have raised serious questions for many citizens long ago, but we've been educated to listen and believe what we are told, not to ask questions or to think for ourselves and search for the truth. Again here, this is the civil flag. Since through usage and custom, horizontal stripes have become adopted for use over military posts and vertical stripes like this adopted for use over civilian establishments. The civil flag intended for peacetime usage in custom house civilian settings had vertical stripes with blue stars on a white field. By the law of the flag, this design denoted civil jurisdiction under the Constitution and common law, as opposed to military jurisdiction under admiralty military law, which, old glory, that's what that is.